Scan Pro Audio webcast. Uh, this week we've got uh, microphones in abundance and some, uh, some very knowledgeable people to talk to you about them. I'm going to start off with uh, what I tried to say the other week, and we had a couple of gremlins. Um, and as you know, in these webcasts, I try to bring a couple of uh, things to your attention. I was talking about the, uh, the Roland HD3 kit last week, which is the smaller brother of the V-drums. And Roland market this as a beginner's kit. But actually, I don't think it is. I think it's a really important piece of kit. Um, I realized the other day that one of the first things I do when I'm in the studio is I start to have to search through loops and tons and tons of drum samples to find what I'm looking for as a starting point. And after that, I have to go and do the same thing looking for fills and this and the other. Here's the brilliant bit about the HD3. It's not so costly that most project studio guys can't afford one. What's brilliant about it is you don't have to be a particularly great drummer. You can get on there and just make your own beat and tidy it up in, afterwards uh, in your door. What's great about it is it's your groove. And you can actually sit there and put the fills in, put everything the way you want it, tidy it up afterwards. It's a really, really useful piece of kit. And whilst I probably wouldn't want to go out with it live and uh, you know, try and do a full show with it, in the studio, it is really, really very useful. So um, check it out. Uh, on the SCAM website. The second thing I wanted to bring to your attention was this. And again, I had this with me last week, but this is absolutely brilliant. Um, one of the problems with trying to record guitar players, acoustic guitar players, is that you set up the mics, you follow all the rules, you read the SCAM blog on how to do it, and you get everything there in precision set up in front of the guitar player. And as soon as he starts to play, he starts to do this sort of behavior, flinging his guitar all over the place, which ruins what you're trying to do. This is from Explore Audio, and it's a Gordon Giltrap signature clamp that actually goes onto your guitar. Now, don't worry, it doesn't do any damage. It's very well engineered and very well made. But what it's doing is it's going to sit on the guitar with the microphone in the correct position. And therefore, whenever you... Oh! So I haven't been told to open the box. It's a good idea. So whenever you, uh -huh, 57 manuals, whenever you move the guitar about, um, this microphone is going to go with you. Because of the way it attaches, it can't be anywhere other than exactly where you placed it. So it's a really, really accurate way of recording guitars in the studio. And uh, again, check them out. The first few, I can't remember just how many, but the first few actually come with a, an accompanying uh, uh, Gordon's latest DVD, uh, where he's playing tracks and showing you exactly how they use this. So it's very cool. And if you're in the business of recording guitars, it's really very worthwhile indeed. OK, we're going to go to some titles. And when we come back, we have the very wonderful Logan Helps from Audio Technica, who's going to talk a little bit about the general theory of mics and uh, how they work and, uh, and basically what Audio Technica have to say about that. So we'll see you in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Hi, I'm Logan from Audio Technica, and I'd uh, just like to say thanks to all the uh, guys down at SCAN for inviting me along today. Uh, really, uh, really great to come down and uh, have a chat about some microphones. And we're kind of looking at the, um, the way a lot of different microphones work, but let's put them into context of using them for broadcast, um, which is really important when you're looking at uh, understanding microphones and you've used video cameras and maybe a DSLRs, but let's see how we can uh, get that video quality right up with uh, extra microphone technology. We're going to look over a few different things. First, why do we want external microphones on your camera? The camera connections, a little bit about the uh, camera setup as well, just to make sure you're always getting the best use of uh, setting up your camera for audio. 
a little bit about different condenser and dynamic microphones. What's the difference? The polar patterns, which is basically how a microphone works to pick up the sound from different directions, what microphone to use for what application. And then we're going to have a look at microphone types and avoiding some of the big pitfalls with audio, wind noise and rumbling and uh, handling noise as well. So uh, further ado, let's have a look. So why use an, internal, an external microphone compared to an internal one? When you have your digital SLRs or your video cameras in your hand, one of the, the big bugbears you'll find is when you're moving your camera around or holding it, you'll, you'll get a lot of noise on that camera. So we really want to avoid picking up any of that noise into a microphone. So the real important part about that is take the microphone off the camera and you'll stop all of that handling noise happening. Another great big problem with it is obviously the um, quality of the mic. You might be spending 600, 1,000 pounds on a really great camera. And yeah, the technology in there is a lot to do with the, the video side of it. And sometimes you kind of lose out a little bit on the quality of the microphone. So if you look at a, an external mic, you know you're paying all your money for a really great quality product, which is going to sound fantastic. Um, so yeah, inbuilt microphone. Sometimes not so good. External microphones, it gives us a lot more choices to, to pick up the audio in different ways. So the first thing you want to understand about getting a mic is, can we actually connect it to the camera? Well, it's a really important question. There's a few different types of camera connections. The first is you have a mini jack connector, which is great. You can use a certain quality of microphone straight into a, uh, a mini jack like this. And with these mini jack connectors, it's a, a straight plug-in job. And it's more you find kind of consumer to prosumer kind of level of product. Next, we have these XLR connectors, which is a professional microphone connector. The really cool thing with these is it's a balanced connector, so it's very good at not picking up any noise for um, any noise that's picked up by a cable. And you can also use... Uh, phantom power, which powers the microphone. So it's really for the more pro to the uh, sub-pro level user, XLR. And the big one to just make sure you avoid is definitely the, um, the camera without a microphone connector. You know, beware that there is some cameras out there, usually at the lower price points, that do not have a microphone input. And when you're buying a camera and you're thinking, I might do video on this, then really try to avoid those cameras. So camera settings is quite important. When you're setting up um, your camera, when you're using it for photography or for video work, you've really got to look at like your ISO and your, um, your aperture and also your shutter speed and all those things control how the image is going to eventually look. On an automatic camera setting with this ISO, sometimes that can go too high and it brings noise into your images. I'm sure we've all had that. I certainly have when I've started to learn to do it. And the same thing can happen with audio. If you use an automatic level function and you plug your audio in there, it will turn up all of the noise when no one's speaking. And that's just going to sound pretty bad. So we really want to avoid using these auto functions for your video uh, for your video audio, you really want to keep that nice and clean. So try and always set the level. And the way you set the level is pretty simple. Get someone to speak really, really loud into the mic. Wait, wait, wait. And then make sure it doesn't peek into that, that red part of the, uh, of the level meter. If your camera doesn't have the option on there, and some, for instance, the, the Canons don't, have a look at, little look around online. There's, there's a lot of great uh, kind of different ways you can get around it. Anyone heard of Magic Lantern? very good piece of uh, a little software to help you along. So onto the microphones. And microphones kind of sit in two different categories. We have something called a condenser and something called a dynamic. The dynamic microphones all work with basically no electronics, a microphone system that's just a magnet ring. And the sound comes in and hits the capsule, it moves it around, way moves it around. And all of that stuff just uh, basically gives you the audio signal. It's mechanical, turning it into electronical electronics. It's not so sensitive, very good for close-up work. Not so good for shotguns when you're far away, or for an ambient mic picking up a, a natural sound. 
The opposite of that is condenser. They use a very, very light plate inside. So inside the actual element is just really, really, really sensitive. But it also needs an electronic circuit on there. So with that electronic circuit, we know it's going to need some form of power and it's going to be a lot more sensitive. Great for ambient mic, all around pickup, and also for shotgun mics for picking up at a, a long distance. That's basically the two different types of microphones. Dynamic, close-up, condenser, pretty much everything else. Next we have polar patterns and pickup patterns. Um, these are basically just a way to express how the microphone picks up sound. It's really nice to think of this as like a torch. So say if you've got a cardio microphone pointing out, it's just like a torch pointing out like this. So wherever it's pointed, it's going to pick up the sound from here or from here. So wherever you pointed that mic, it's going to work the best way. It's usually about 120 degrees um, in terms of that pickup pattern. And you can think of that on a lens as like a nice wide angle lens. It's just kind of nice fat wide angle lens that picks up pretty much everything in the direction you're pointing it at. Next, we have something called omnidirectional. Omnidirectional is from the Latin. I don't sound clever. I've just read it on Wikipedia. I don't know. Omnidirectional all around. So it's really, really great for picking up. So if we're having a big conversation around this table, one microphone, reporter mic there like that. Rather than when I'm interviewing someone having to move the mic back and forth, I could just hold it, bang, right in the middle. Very, very good microphone for ambient pickup and, and all of that side of stuff. And next we have shotgun mics. Hello. These guys are very, very cool. With a shotgun microphone, we can pick it up a lot tighter. So you can imagine this is like a tele uh, photo lens where you really want to get that tight shot of someone speaking. Very good for stopping any ambient pickup, which is the real killer when you're using this type of mic. It's a very, very clever, clever um, technique to just, you know, get the sound you want. So it's a uh, shotgun microphone. Cool, moving on to the types of microphones. We've got a tie clip mic. Some people call it Lavalier as well, which uh, I was reminded just today is just the length of a necklace. It's a French word, but yeah, it's a tie clip microphone. Clip it onto your tie. Picks up really great sound. It avoids hearing the background sound because it's so close to the user. It's so close to your mouth. It's just going to pick up that a lot louder than anything else. You have two types. You've got your cardioids. So like a torch, it picks up where you're pointing it toward. And omnidirectional, so if someone's, way, I'm talking everywhere, moving my head around, it's still going to pick up all of that, that voice work. It's not going to come in and out, moving around. So it's a little bit more natural. But the cardioid's a lot better for feedback rejection. So if you're ever using it with a live PA, the cardioid's a good choice for that as well. Now we have stereo mics. So this is our um, little Pro 24 CMF. And this guy's wicked. So stereo fits onto the top of your camera and picks up both sides. It hears like we hear. So we've got two ears, and it sounds great. You can hear a car flying by. We can hear people having a discussion and get that nice, uh, nice clarity on both the left and the right side. The Pro 24 CMF comes with this hot shoe mount. And this little mount's really cool. It stops all of the vibrations coming up because of this rubberized mount. Slip your microphone on. Plug it straight into your camera, straight away. And it also comes with some fur, which we'll talk about in a minute. And there's also a very cool competition on this uh, that uh, the guys from Scan have very generously offered. Um, if you go to scanprovideo.info, and you can uh, find out where you can win one of those for free. So moving back to shotgun microphone technology, how far will this guy pick up sound? If it's a volcano erupting, probably about three miles. It's a pretty good beast. But it works in a very cool way. It has these fins all the way along the side. And as sound comes in from the front, it'll go straight down into the element, which is right here. As sound comes in from the side, it takes a little bit more time to get, get into the element. And what happens is it gets a time delay. And as one signal's straight and another one's time delayed, 
you can have one going up, down, up, down, up, down, and this one's going down, up, down, up, and they cancel each other out. One minus one equals zero. And what happens when it cancels that sound out from the side is we can point it right where we want it to be, and it'll pick up sound just from that one spot. So it depends on how much and how long your shotgun microphone is to how clear that sound is. And believe me, the bigger is the better. And they do pick up sound from a long distance. We've got voiceover microphones that are very important on broadcast as well. So once you're uh, doing your post-production work and you might realize, oh, that voice recording is not very good, there's a bit of noise in the background, then yeah, you can record it afterwards. Something like the 2020 USB Plus is perfect for that. Studio work, USB straight into your computer, you have a headphone out, and you can listen back to the backing track as well and have live monitoring. It's the best way to do voiceover work for commercials or voiceovers at the start or the end of a, of a video shoot or anything like that as well. Miking your microphones is very important. There's a few different ways you can mic, uh, mount them. Pistol grips are really great for giving you all that action when you're using a shotgun mic and means you can point it to where you need to pick up that sound. Usually very good at stopping any vibrations as well, getting into the microphone. Boom arms as well, a really, really popular way to do it. With that long boom pull, you can get your microphone nice and close to the uh, listener, but keep it out of the shot. And uh, also you can get them camera mounted. Obviously, uh, a lot of nice little clips to do that as well. And the shock mount's the real important part. Let's keep that shock mount there and it'll stop any of that handling noise, that horrible sound you can get when you're holding the microphone straight away. Now, wind and rumble are probably one of the biggest problems you have with broadcast audio. And the biggest um, mistake a lot of people use is thinking, I want 20 to 20 kilohertz. I want the biggest sound to be picked up. Well, do you know what? We're not recording a kick drum. We're not recording a bass guitar. If we're recording a voice, we want to get rid of all that bass end. The last thing you want to find is an I all that bass rumbling going on in the microphone. If you have a microphone with a bass roll off, it'll usually look like a straight line and a curved line. And that curved line is the bass roll off. So if you use that for most um, voice work, it'll stop any of the rumbling happening that you might find on a microphone. It's not all about clean, straight audio. Sometimes we want to tailor it on the microphone. And with that on the mic, rather than in post-production, it means you can get a lot better headroom. We can turn it up a lot more and get a cleaner audio recording without any of that bass disrupting the recording signal. And of course, the other big problem is wind, which this little fur guy is required to stop. Now, if you imagine when you blow into a microphone, should we do it here? Let's have a go. It sounds crap. Put a windshield. It sounds good. That's what it's all about. That's what a windshield is for. And the fur ones are great for doing it. And that's the wind and rumbling. And that's all of the uh, bits about the Audio Technica products. And I'm going to hand you back across. Thanks very much for listening. We've got a question. As well. Oh, yeah. Question. Here we go. Uh, so we, we have a question from Sam who says uh, he wants to get a microphone to speak on Skype whilst playing games. Are any of these any good? Oh, hi, Sam. It's a really great question. The best microphones for um, Skyping while playing games would generally be a headset. Um, Audio Technica do one called a BPHS1, which is a really high quality um, headset microphone with uh, an inbuilt headphones and a microphone to do it. If you don't want to use a headset, the other way to do it is with um, like just a straight microphone set like this that you can have on your head. You can also do it with tie clips, but it's not as common. Um, but the BPHS one is, is is a great microphone for doing that with.
Thanks for that, Logan. Um, just to remind you, if any of you have any suggestions or things that you want to see or you want us to uh, webcast, uh, any topics or any products, do let us know. Um, you can t get to us via all the usual social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, or just give us a call. Uh, next up, we've got the very equally wonderful Vince Borelli, who's going to be talking about something I mentioned a few weeks ago, the, the, the little Mike W products. These are really cool. Uh, so just one more set of titles and we'll have Uncle Vince. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Vince. I'm from Syntax UK. Uh, as Logan said earlier, I'd like to thank everybody at SCAN for inviting us over to talk about some of our products and uh, microphones in general. If you've got any more questions about mics, uh, I'm sure I can handle them as well as Logan. And uh, I'd like to thank Logan as well for all his uh, wonderful knowledge. Um, our products are called Mic W, and uh, I've got an array here, which I'll start showing you in a minute. I'll just give you a bit of a basic background on what they're about. Uh, it's a Chinese company called uh, Mike W, but they're based on uh, a production company called BSWA that have been making measurement microphones for uh, many, many years now uh, for reference use and for uh, scientific and high-end miking. And from that sprung a range of microphones, which they call the i-series. Uh, there are others in the range, but we're going to focus on these tonight because I think it's more important for you guys to see this. And the first in the, uh, in the series is something called the i 436, which is this tiny monster here. I don't know whether we could zoom in on that, how beautiful that device is. Now that will work with any iPhone and most Android phones. Uh, and the whole point of it is, as Logan described earlier, this is an omnidirectional microphone. It will pick up from every direction. So I can put this into my phone. I, I've got a, a poor, lonely little device here, not an iPhone because my company can't afford one. And it allows me to record anything, basically. So if I want to do an interview, I could interview. And as Logan said earlier, I can put it in the front. It's omnidirectional, so it'll pick up from everywhere. And more importantly, because this is a class two reference microphone, if you have any environmental issues that in terms of noise abatement or anything similar where you need to actually register noise and at what level it's at, as you can see from this device here, it will actually pick up and it's a good enough quality being a class two to be using evidence for people like councils or if you've got a, an issue with noise from a neighbor, et cetera, et cetera, you can measure on this microphone. It uses, as you can see, a mini stereo jack there and it is actually a condenser. Uh, as Logan described earlier, dynamics are just not sensitive enough to work uh, at this sort of field. So all the microphones I'm going to show you now, small as they are, they are all condensers and they take their power from your device, be it an iPhone, be it a DSLR. Um, again, one of the things was mentioned earlier, if you've got a poor DSLR and it doesn't have a microphone input, input, you don't necessarily have to change your camera. You could actually record the sound into your iPhone or your iPad or your iTouch or your Android device and then you could ma magically put the sound in WAV form onto your computer along with the pictures and uh, you'll get away with what you need to do. So that's the first of the range, that's the i436. They all come with their own calibration device here, which is telling you exactly what level that microphone is, specific to the i436. Every single one is calibrated individually. The next in the range that I'm going to show you is for you guys who like to record acoustic guitar or vocals or bands or anything similar, and that's the 266 or the i266. As you can see, you see the tiny holes in the side of this device. I don't know whether you can pick that up on camera, guys. Bit down a bit. Can you see this? It has no at all? Yes, you can see that. So we've got tiny holes in the side, which is a condenser. If you notice that the omnidirectional next to it has no holes. Okay, so you can, you can spot a condenser and a cardioid, invariably by some sort of ventilation holes. You'll also notice that the diaphragm itself is quite a lot larger than the 436. So the 266 is more sensitive 
and it will pick up a bigger range of frequencies. So if you want to record a great vocal or acoustic guitar, you can do that with this. I've done some really good tests with this. I've, I've recorded directly onto my uh, friend's iPhone on my Android device, just from the microphone involved. Then I've used the microphones here, the 436, 436 and the 266, and I've taken those WAV files from my phone, put them onto a Cubase software, and looked at the images and listened to the sound difference. And it is absolutely amazing. The difference between the WAV on the standard phone, which could be, if you, if you took a measurement with this size, and when I uh, put on the, wa the WAV from the microphones, it was at least four to five times in terms of dynamic range. Much better sound, much higher quality. Great for interviewing. That's, that's the key for these microphones. If, if part of your student course in the future is to be uh, part of the electronic news gathering scene, these will allow you to carry your device with you anywhere. You don't have to have a separate recorder. You can just use your own phone or, as I said, an iTouch or even an iPad. They come in kit form as well as singular microphones, and the kit form is probably the best way to go for these devices. And what you get with the kit form is every type of adapter, which allows you to use headphones. So there's a device there. Headphones and the microphone at the same time. Or you can use extension cables, which I'll show you a little bit about in a moment. And there, there are also tie clips. So you can even use these microphones, although they're not designed for it, as a Lavalier or tie clip style microphone. So there we go, fellas. The kit form also comes with a carry case for your mic. And if you can see here, we've got an aluminium cylinder. Are we getting that in focus, kids? Great. I shall take out my microphone, screw the device back together. So it's not just a case which you can carry on your wonderful key ring, because we all like to do that. Put my keys away to stop noise, but I could have showed you that. You can insert the microphone into a shock mount. If you notice that there is movement in there, there's actually an O-ring inside that device, which allows me to take any shock, again, which was mentioned before. I would then attach my extension cable to the back of that. The most important part of this is on the bottom, there's a, a thread for your mic stand. So you could actually stand that up either on a tabletop mounted mic stand or on a, a, a regular mic stand and do your recordings completely separately to everything. This one is the 456 or the i456. And again, this is going to be really difficult to see, but that has actually got tiny holes, tiny holes. In the side, so this is a cardioid. Again, I will compare it to the 436. See, very similar shape, but this one has no holes, so it's omni. This one has holes, so it's cardioid. We also mentioned before Lavalier microphones, so again, tie clips. This is one of the most beautiful devices that the, uh, the range that we do. There's two devices, the 825 and the 855. Again, as was mentioned earlier, one is omnidirectional, one is cardioid. And depending on how you want to use it, if you went for the omnidirectional one, you can see how tiny this is. This is on the scale of things. You can see it in comparison to my fingernail. That is a really tiny microphone. It means you can use it in omnidirectional mode. You could hide it in your hairline. As you can see, I don't have any hair. So my hairline is a bit of a, a bugger to hide it in. But um, if, you, if you're on theater work or you wanted to record something um, so it's a discrete microphone, that's how small it is, that's how you can get away with that. Again, it comes in kit form, all of the I-825s and 855s, so you get the tie clip uh, options, you get tiny mic muffs as well. These are like the windscreens that were mentioned in our last piece, which keep, the, uh, keep that nasty wind off that we mentioned before, which I do suffer with, I'm afraid. Um, and it also comes with a bunch of stickers which keep the cables tight against your clothing. Um, these aren't just pieces of tape. The point about this is they actually have density and stop any cable vibration which will pick up sound and go onto your recording. And they have different colors of that so you can match your clothing or in fact in my case a skin tone. The final one of the few that I want to show you is the most sophisticated and fun one I think for you guys. I'm going to clear all this away. And we've already seen some impressive shotguns from Audio-Technica. And they do say bigger is better. But I like to think that uh, this has got its place as well. So if you want a lightweight microphone to fit on top of your DSLR or your video camera, 
or your iPad or your iPhone or your Android device, this baby is the beast. Again, as was mentioned before, it's a proper shotgun mic. It will reject sound that comes in from the side. And when you point it at something, it will pick up the sound that you point it at. It has the classic connection, which again is, the, is a three-way, 3.5mm uh, jack socket. It comes with all sorts of, in the kit form, which it comes, you've got the short cable. So if you're going straight into your video or to your DSLR or, or whatever you're using, you don't have lots of cable hanging around. There's another extension cable, which I'll show you where this comes into use in a moment. It also comes in with a bunch of adapters. Now these adapters, again, allow you to use the microphone. And if you want to monitor what you're doing, you can put headphones in this end. Or, in fact, you could put in another microphone. If I wanted to attach my Lavalier, if I was doing an interview with somebody, I could be pointing this at somebody, have the Lavalier on myself, I'd record my question, and then I'd get the answer from the interviewee. And it comes with a whole range of those. Most important bit, of course, the shock mount. We don't want any noise to come through the camera. And um, Mike W have come up with a really neat solution with the old rubber band style thing that you see on a lot of studio microphones. So that's now firmly secured in a hot shoe style shock mount. And you can see there's plenty of movement on there. It really isn't going anywhere. And part of that is you can add this now to our baby boom. So if I just screw that on. And with the uh, appropriate bit of magic, I now have a boom mic, which I can do recording with. And that's what the extension cable is for. It doesn't just come with tie wraps to hold the cable together. They are actually to clip to the extension boom. And that allows the cable noise not to be heard because it will keep it still. So that comes as a complete kit. All of this stuff is available on the SCAN website. Uh, I'm not going to do the sales line. You really need to hear this stuff to, to be aware of how good it is. The quality is quite astounding. And uh, we've got quite a few of the guys locally trying to use it. Are there some questions there, young Tom? Uh, actually, actually I, I just want to point out that certain items that have been covered today are actually on special offer, but only for the duration of the webcast. Oh, that's They're important. They're on the webcast page, but that includes one of them. Thank you so much. So if you didn't get that, I'm going to go through it again. Uh, tonight and tonight only, there are special deals for these products that are available at SCAN. We've come to some sort of arrangement with them, obviously. I think they've had the, my arm up my back earlier on, which really did hurt. And uh, we've agreed to uh, support them in this uh, venture. So if there are any questions tonight, I'd, uh, I'd like to answer. Anything coming through? <coughs> storing microphones. What's the best way to store uh, microphones generally? I mean, clearly keep them out of the rain, but are there any sort of recommendations you have? Yeah, I, 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 th that's actually quite important, Steve, what you said there. M microphones have very delicate membranes inside which pick up the, the movement in the air. So we're going to try and protect them as, as, as best we can. Dry, cool places, not too hot, not too cold. The silica gel packs that you see in a lot of um, um, products when they arrive through your door to keep the damp away, I think are always useful. So if you're not going to be using the microphone for a long time, put a silica gel pack in there. That will draw out all the moisture that's in the case. And anything, if, if it suddenly goes from cold to hot and then cold again, there won't be any moisture that's going to form on the, the fragile diaphragm in, in the microphone. It's particularly important with condenser microphones. Again, as men was mentioned earlier, they're much, much thinner and a lot more sensitive. Obviously, with this, this sort of style of stuff that I've been discussing with the Mic W, which is much smaller, it's harder for moisture to get in there and cause you any problems. But equally so, don't leave it in extremes of temperature. All of our products have actually been tested. You can actually use them down to really, really low temperatures, that, particularly the Class 2 reference, uh, because we know it's going to be used outdoors and it could be used in any of those situations. But it's not recommended to leave it there beyond your normal use. And again, if you are going from a very warm place to it, just like was mentioned before, if you compare it to, say, lenses on your camera, you wouldn't go from a very cold place to a very warm place because you get all sorts of condensation. If you do have that happen, give it a chance to clear out. Get it to, get it, give it a chance to get up to the normal temperature before you start using it. Okay, so I'm going to hand you back to uh, Uncle Steve, who's um, a jolly nice man, and I'm sure he's going to take you through some other things. Thank you for listening. Uh, please do ask us any more questions. And... Uh, if you do want to send some emails to the guys at Scanner, they'll, they'll forward them to us and we'll answer them as best we can.
Well, isn't this cosy? All three of us. Um, what we were going to do was see if we had any questions. And I think I spotted something on there, Tom, specifically for Logan about an Audio Technica mic. Oh, yeah, thank you very much for that question. It was on um, a question about the ATM 33A, which uh, is classic. a discontinued microphone now, but yes, it definitely is a classic. Um, it's uh, how long will its lifespan last? Well, it's quite a good question, and uh, we touched on it a little bit with how you store the microphones and use them. Um, if it is well looked after, you should definitely get 15 years plus out of a, a good microphone, if not more, uh, when you really take care of them, as long as you're not trying to hammer nails in with them or whatever. The equivalent to it now, the current microphone, is called an AT8033, um, which uh, is a really great microphone based on a similar idea, um, but just a, a better uh, specification on the circuitry and the elements. So yeah, great question. Thanks. Do we have any other questions, Tom? OK, then it really only remains for me to thank uh, my guest this week, Mr. Logan Helps. Thank you very much. Mr. Vince Borelli. And Join us again next week. As I say, we're going to be trying to do this every week, every Thursday at 7 o'clock. Um, I think it's a bit of a mystery guest thing next week, isn't it, Tom? Oh, oh we've got Kevin from Adam Speakers. Sorry, I, I didn't know we did, that we had that. And Klaus. Okay. So we have Adam Speakers next week. We have Kevin, who's going to be talking about us. We've got an interview with Klaus, who is the, is it the designer, German yeah. designer. Yeah. So stick around for that. And, uh, yeah, join us next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.